<laughs> so that is the most popular strategy of, um, I'm going to say the now moment, the power of the law of attraction. Um, and I'm going to say that's another level of manifestation. It is bringing the quality of our focus in vibration. Can we bring that which we are wanting into a high enough vibration that the field and um, the law of what we'll call the law of attraction being the um, vibrational field that aligns with our um, focused attention. You know, I, I find the most interesting part about the law of attraction in one sense that in that theory, in that approach, it really doesn't recognize the vibration of attracting something, doesn't really recognize whether it's something you are wanting or not wanting. It has everything to do with how you are able to focus your uh, attention in some right. ways on the vibration of that which you are looking to attract. So it's a yeah. different level yeah. of manifestation because it's geared about attention and and many people go into the law of attraction seeing if they can bring into their lives what they are intending, what they're looking yes. for and what they're desiring. It's I, I would certainly not call it a higher level and, and not from a perspective of anything other than to me what is the highest is allowing a higher an all-knowing intelligence of the field to determine what's appropriate but following the law of attraction what happens is um, we we work to create our attention in a certain way so that things manifests in our lives which sometimes you know trying to have our attention somewhere also has a little bit of a ooh, I hope I don't fear base of not of what if we put our attention on the wrong thing and then when we try not to focus on something you know it's like trying not to think of a pink elephant all you can do and so sometimes according to the laws you might be attracting where you are so it takes a very good center to do the law of attraction I am just thankful that as we talked about in the earlier segment in reconnective healing we don't have to work on that but reconnective healing no again pressure. is not about there's no pressure on doing it right or wrong but again reconnective healing is not about bringing a specific desired result in it's about seeing what a higher intelligence has in mind for us and and the other aspect i think in both the law of attraction and manifesting is is there is a resistance component that plays into it yeah. um, and and I think really when we are in a healing state depending on what the issue may be whether it's depression or it's again a physical problem or we're looking to ignite more abundance wealth a relationship whatever it may be that is at the emotional level it's it's at the thinking mind level and to adeptly work at controlling our resistance by using an intention attention and intention based formula um, you have to create tremendous uh, consistency right. and, in and, that and mental di and emotional a, discipline absolutely. with it at the same time and I think that that's a healthy uh, approach to the evolution of our society uh, we've seen tremendous growth in people's ability to rely part of the time on their ability to turn uh, mind to matter to use that power of the law of attraction and understand the quantum field and understand the organic nature of how they vibrate, how we vibrate in embodiment and what effect that has on everything around us. As a skill <laughs> with proper discipline, it is really excellent. Yes. It, it's also a little bit like, like someone who is skilled in going to a post battle scene and walking through the areas to find the landmines without stepping on them 
But there's also like, you know, you <laughs> want to be careful to, you know, life may go through just <laughs> that, that, that proper way. Uh, and, and, oh, and, I'm sorry. And, and the other thing about that, though, is when in a healing situation we enter into it, it's easier said than done to not have our attention on the problem that we want fixed. And it is an art to take it off of that because, again, energy follows where our attention is. So sometimes the concept of having, having our attention on a healed result brings us to that path where we end up experiencing or receiving different kinds of, of healing manifestations. Having our attention on the problem that we want fixed in that sense of law of attraction can be attracting us further into that problem that we want fixed because that would be where our attention goes. So it's an art. Yes, and, and I think one of the loopholes that often um, we can get tricked up in is when ex expectation uh, becomes part of the game. Yeah. And, and there is a very subtle difference when we're talking about resistance between, let's say, expectation and expectancy. And we look at that a lot in Reconnective Healing. You know, at a certain point when or by the time you decide to explore Reconnective Healing, you're really at that intersection where probably you know that there is something greater out there, <laughs> in there, and right. out there in the architecture of everything that evolves and um, involves you in your life path. Uh, one of the beautiful aspects, though, is that there is a tangibility. There is um, a way in which you are participating, even though you're not participating in the direction of the outcome. Or as we say, we don't ever focus on symptoms because reconnective healing isn't a treatment-based healing approach. But you're a participant in what I will say, the unfolding of that latent, that hidden yet there, we'll say that invisible knowingness, becoming visible, uh, in your awareness, in the awareness of the energy, light, and information, and you can observe it with great depth and specificity. And um, we love that part of Reconnective Healing because it brings about a very active listening, right. a very active involvement that perhaps is different than setting up a intention right. box or you know, really taking your thoughts in a particular direction to yield an outcome. Right. And I was uh -huh. going to yes, say, yes. this <laughs> is both on the part of the um, client and the facilitator. Right. Where the client's attention is, where the facilitator's attention is, both energy follows. But, you know, that's really interesting because it leads us back into the question that, that you asked a little earlier, which is with reconnective healing, you kind of asked this as a two-part question, so let me see if I can rephrase it correctly for you. With reconnective healing, do we need to be in our positive thoughts to see the change we want? Uh -huh. And if I'm in my negative thoughts during reconnective healing, will reconnective healing amplify that? And the answer to both is no. The reason being is that once we enter into the state of reconnective healing, we allow ourselves to be there. We are in observation, but we're not in our thoughts. If we're staying in our thoughts, it's us holding ourselves back sometimes a little bit from entering into that reconnective healing state. So when we're in that state, we are observing, we are witnessing, yes. we are experiencing without judgment, and without judgment includes suddenly you find that we're without positive or negative. We're, we're in spaces that people often say they're, they're not awake, they're not asleep, there's someone else, they're noticing, they're observing so many things that go on. Again, 
we find that as facilitators as well as when we're experiencing the session itself. So it sort of removes the worry, as we touched on earlier. How it allows that? it the frequencies yeah. bring us to a state called quiescence. Of, called quiescence yes. and, and which is another way of saying awareness awareness, which is another way of saying a latent latency. State. Yes. A latent being able to manifest us at a higher level. Will and you explain this? Well? I think that the unknown is something that seems to happen on a um, very visceral and um, biochemical level. There is a almost a bypassing of what we'll call the thinking, intentional, directional mind state. And what happens in the engagement with the energy light and information is something in the neuronal pathways that creates thoughts and emotions seems to go into um, a more dynamic, almost gamma-like brainwave state where that that is everything, that that is oneness and unity. And actually what they're finding, you know, when we listen to Joe Dispenza and others speak, what we know of is that even beyond gamma, beyond theta, beyond gamma, they're now discovering that at least we're finding that it explains a lot of what reconnective healing uh, people experiencing it are going through, that we're actually entering into a lambda yes. state, which is at, at a level even beyond. So at that point, you're not focused in any way, anyway. In any <laughs> um, way, A directional anyway. intention, or um, are you getting it right, or are you not getting it right? And the reason I love the word visceral is because viscera is a word meaning your organs, your liver, your kidney, your lungs. But visceral also means not just of the organs, but organic. Yeah. So it's an organic level with the organic natural state of us being in our our highest and therefore vibrating with our highest and therefore receiving our highest in that place once we let go into the reconnective healing experience so i wanted to touch on that yeah. now because i know we're going to enter into it when we move on to the next level